Autry, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on WROI and WROI HD1. I stole the spotlight from Johnny for a few minutes because with on CEO. John Alley's here and I love talking to this man. How good, you doing? Good morning. Pleasure to be here. Glad to have you here. A little slick out there this morning. It is. You got to slow down, take a little extra yeah. time to get to your destination. Yeah. Going's not a problem. It's putting a woe on is the problem <laughs> right now. I saw quite a few folks sliding through stop signs. So uh, really? be careful this morning. You know, what I say every winter, we don't want to meet by accident. So uh, yep. just be careful. Take your time. Leave a little early. Give yourself that distance. Yes, absolutely. Yesterday was board meeting day. So kind of, again, we're Zooming as everybody else is. So I think that's... I'm finally getting the hang of it. It's only taken me about eight months to figure out how to actually, you know, use my iPad to Zoom. So I feel I've made a major accomplishment this year. I was actually on an iPad Zoom meeting instead of my computer with no camera. So, uh, well, yeah. you're a step ahead of me. I haven't figured it out yet. My yeah. kids Zoom for e-learning, and I'm going, you do what? Yeah. So, I, you know, check off the bucket list. I can now Zoom on an iPad. So uh, There we go. Yeah. I, it was a good day. So not a lot covered in a board meeting. Again, we're kind of at that time of year where everything's winding down. We're finalizing what we've done for the year. So we're kind of looking at, you know, now kicking off some of the next year stuff. So uh, we did have uh, Krista Hayob, our director of inpatient services, came in for a replacement of three beds. And this was kind of our kickoff meeting for a planned bed replacement program. So every few years you would like to cycle through your beds. But, you know, with 25 beds, that gets real expensive. So we're going to do three, four, five a year maybe late this year another four or five just to get some of the new beds in the building uh, current beds are several years old still very functional but you know parts are starting to get hard to find for them and some of the new beds have features on them that you know we're doing manually now that they can track for us so you know like anything else technology is improving everything hospital beds is one of those things so uh, that's kind of an ongoing process right now so we did get approval to move with three new beds and Hopefully by the first year we'll have those in-house and start using those. Awesome. One of the other things we looked at yesterday, you know, where we've done the uh, Da Vinci robot for general surgery and for um, OBGYN. So we've entered into, uh, hopefully entered into a partnership with Biomet Zimmer the first of the week to bring in an orthopedic robot. And it's kind of new technology, not a lot of them out there yet. And I can't say enough about Biomet Zimmer. They've really helped us bring that into our facility and truly a partner with us. And that's what it's going to take as we move through these healthcare you know, innovations and technology. you got to find somebody you can partner with. So, uh, you know, it's been a long journey to get to that partnership, but I think we're going to have a finalized probably special board meeting Friday morning, a uh, Zoom meeting. And all the details came in too late for yesterday, so we'll have to have a special meeting on Friday. Board will, I think, will sign off on it and start moving forward. So really looking forward to that. And basically right now it'll be for knee surgery, so it, uh, I'm not a surgeon, so you'll get the, the layman's view of how this thing works. Basically it helps the surgeon get the optimal angle on the cut for when you're doing the knee replacements. Right now they got to have a person holds it, they eyeball it. Well with this robot, that controls the leg. And they explained to me, no matter what happens with the, the leg, if there's a movement at all, it keeps the cut in the same plane at all times. So if you want a 30 degree angle, you will always have that. And it's not a person holding the knee getting tired. The robot can hold it. So really excited about that. Uh, hopefully mid to late next year, there'll be some add-ons to it. We might look at some hip surgeries that now we can do with it. So again, exciting news. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, somebody told me we were gonna be doing robot surgeries. I said, oh, you're crazy. but. Uh, we're getting there. So it really adds to the program we have now and just expands that now into the orthopedic field. So really excited about getting that going and uh, hopefully have everything signed by first of next week and move forward with that. A lot of questions I've been getting, what about the vaccine? <laughs> right now uh, we're still waiting from the State Board of Health how they're going to roll it out to the public. It's been on the news, you know, they're rolling out to healthcare workers now and uh, nursing home employees and residents. We're hoping by the first year to have a little more information, what to talk about phase 1B and beyond, which were they rolled out to the public. We were not selected at a 1A site, just because we weren't big enough, to be quite honest. However, we're pretty sure we'll be selected as a 1B site, and that might start within, you know, sometime next week, where we can start doing healthcare workers at our facility. 
not the general public yet, but it's still healthcare workers, long-term uh, care employees, EMS, you know, emergency personnel. So that'd be nice. Right now, uh, all of our folks have to drive to Warsaw. That's our assigned site uh, to get the vaccine. That starts Friday for several of our workers. So more information to come once the state starts releasing this. Um, they're under the, you know, same thing. Federal government tells them, then they pass it on to us. So as you're working with two levels of government, the information comes slow, but it is coming. So uh, hang in there, folks. Vaccine will be available in the area. I'm guessing mid-January, 1st of February, to the general public. We should have enough supply in the state to start getting everybody vaccinated. And, you know, healthcare worker, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, you know, when you look at the side effects, they're minimal right now. But the benefit to, the, to you, to your family, your friends, and to the community is astronomical. If we can stop the spread of this, everybody we can get back to normal, hopefully by mid-year whatever that new normal is going to be, but kind of get away so we don't have to wear these all the time. You get the vaccine, you still need to wear a mask. You still need to social distance until we start really seeing a massive decline in the number of new cases. Protect your, your fellow you know, workers, your family. Even though you got the vaccine, still wear your mask. So I know nobody wants to hear that, but it, it is uh, what it is for a while. But there's light at the end of that tunnel. The other thing came out uh, last week, uh, the governor did send an executive order for us to suspend non-urgent inpatient surgeries because they're wanting to preserve the beds. Right. We're still, I don't think we've hit our peak yet of uh, hospitalizations. I think with the holidays coming, with Christmas and New Year's, third week of January is going to be horrendous. So we're trying to save those beds for, you know, if you are really sick, you know, some, some of these non-urgent surgeries requires it maybe a two day, three day stay to help you get recuperated. So we are suspending those right now. The surgeons are making that decision. Is this something that has to be done? If it has to be done, it's gonna be done. The governor's fine with that. But you know, a lot of folks said, oh, well, I've been putting off my hip replacement for two years, I wanna get it done now. That's gonna be a non-urgent and we'll probably have to put that off. Right now, the date's January 4th. I'm thinking that that might be revised once that day comes to stretch it out a little bit. I, I hope okay. not, but uh, you know we are complying with that order and really looking at each case. So, you know, if it's an outpatient procedure, we're good to go. The inpatients, we really got to look at those case by case basis. Does it comply with the governor's executive order? And if if it does, we'll do the surgery. If not, we'll have to delay it. Um, real quick question I had as sure. you're talking about the surgeries. What is your visitation policy right now? Right now it's one visitor per patient. Um, and again, that could change. You know, for at one point we actually had it shut down. There was no visitors because of the amount of new cases. We're still comfortable as of today saying one visitor per patient. Um, prefer that, you know, not happening because the less traffic we have in the building, we've got really sick people, compromised immune systems, don't bring stuff in, but we've got COVID patients in the building. You don't want to catch it. So our preference is you just stay out. Don't come in the building. Uh, I know people aren't happy with that. You know, if you're a minor, you know, come in. But really, you don't need to be visiting right now. Um, it's just not safe for you. It's not safe for the rest of our patients, to be quite honest. And that's, that's the biggest thing. So, yeah, we're restricting that. Probably going to shut, again, number of new cases if they keep increasing. It's going to be just absolutely locked down the whole building because we've got to protect staff. You know, right now I've had almost 35 employees test positive over the past several months. Um, and it's because patients, visitors come in not wearing masks and they expose us. So for us to take care of you, we got to be healthy. So, right. you know, please understand it's, it, we don't like saying no visitors, but that's where it's at. We just got to keep our staff safe to treat you if you do have a, a problem. And the technology these days is great. You can video chat with people, so yes, it does. If I can do it, anybody can. You know, I figured it out yesterday. So you know, if an old guy like me can figure it out, everybody can. I, you, I get, you can do it on your phones, your iPads. So we prefer just don't come in. You, you know, come in, see us if you have an appointment. If you you know are sick, but just to visit, please stay home. It's just not worth the risk to our patients and the staff. You know, it's it's hard finding staff right now, and you know when I've most of those who have tested positive have been my frontline workers, nurses, respiratory therapists. That's the ones I absolutely have to have in the building. 
And when they're out, they're out for 10 to 14 days. That really curtails what we can do. So uh, trying to protect everybody. I know nobody likes to hear it, but that, you know, the facts are, please stay home, don't come in the building. Finally got down to the financial report, and uh, for the month of, let's see, it would be November, about 12 million gross revenue. We wrote off about 7.4 million, so we're keeping right at 60%. We had some other operating revenue, about 25,000, had operating expenses of 5.2 million. So we actually came up with an operating loss this month of about 350,000. I prefer that to be a you know a black number instead of a red number, but it could have been worse. So I'm kind yeah. of okay with that. Had some non-operating revenue of about 465,000. So you know a total net income from the month of 116,000. You know that's not too bad. Uh, you know year to date still not looking good because of the three months that we had big everything shut down for three months. You know I can't make that up in the balance of the year. Uh, we still have a lot of the governmental money we got, and we still don't know how we can use it. Uh, so it's getting real frustrating. We'll get some final rules that, oh, you can use this, this, and this, and then the next day, no, wait a minute, we've changed our mind. So I'm fairly conservative. I don't want to get to the point where we've used the money, and then all of a sudden the government said, oh, by the way, you got to send it all back, put us in a hole. So we're monitoring that very closely. Uh, you know, we'll kind of let the auditors, we have an outside audit firm come in and do each year. Let them tell us how to report that and what we need to do with it. That way, you know, we've got some other folks other than just us saying save it or spend it. So, okay. you know, try not to spend it unless we have to. Um, you know, those items that we can use it for, we will. Um, you know, vents, uh, ventilators have been the big thing. And, and back in, I think it was 1st of April, received just a small a blurb of an email. Hey, would you like, you know, get into the governmental program for surplus vents? And so I said, well, sure, let's do this. So everybody was kind of saying, Woodlawn Hospital, we're not going to get anything. We're in the middle of nowhere. Well, hopefully tomorrow we're receiving four brand new vents from the federal government. And the good part is they're identical to the two we just purchased. So that would bring us up to six state-of-the-art vents that I hope we never, ever have to use. But if we do, we now have them available at Woodlawn and we have people that can man them. So uh, feel real good that we was able to get those. And it was no cost, you know, that those are part of the strategic stockpile that the federal government had. So it was just, uh, took a while, uh, April to now, but yeah. uh, we're scheduled to receive those tomorrow. So uh, good. that was kind of a nice Christmas gift. We got the actual email notification on Thanksgiving that we'd been approved and then uh, got the FedEx delivery notice yesterday that they'll be delivered tomorrow so uh, hey that's even better that's even better yet so nice Christmas for everybody at the hospital yeah absolutely so, so that was pretty well the board meeting so uh, looking forward now to kind of get through the holidays and relax a little bit hopefully next year's gonna be a little better than what 2020 was we can all hope but of course I keep seeing everybody joke on social media that uh, December 31st at 11 59 when it goes to turn over to the new year it's just gonna be a repeat you well, I hope not I though. hope not to I, I think we're gonna have a repeat for about the first three to five months maybe because it's gonna take a while you know for yeah. all this to get in and, and you know the vaccines you know it's not not instantaneous you can get the vaccine your second dose you're really not protected for about 30 days to 40 days post second dose you have some minor uh, up front that first dose will give you a little bit of immunity Second dose takes it there, but it still takes 30 to 40 days for your body to prevent or uh, produce those antibodies to say, okay, here's this foreign thing in me, and they attack it. So, you know, you got to be, be be patient. And light's coming, but it's probably going to be mid year, I think, before we start seeing, you know, a lot of not needing the mask anymore and, and kind of things opening back up again. Try to get back to somewhat of a normal life that. Uh, Really, we didn't have at all for for 2020. So yeah. 2021, there's got to be some hope out there. Hang in there, be patient, and be vigilant. Just wear your mask, protect yourself and, and your family and your coworkers. Sounds perfect. We'll end on that advice. Thank all you right. very much, Mr. Alley, for stopping by. Uh, we'll talk to you again uh, in 2021. Yes, we're, we're done for this year, aren't we? Yes, so we are. We'll, we'll do this again in January. All right, enjoy the holidays, sir. Same to you. Thank you. Thank you. What's on